Hello there everybody and welcome to this channel. My name is Savvy from SAAnatomy.com and for today's video we're going to be working on a crocodile. So get your reference images ready, get your drawing pads, let's hop into Blender and let's get started. So for this crocodile I actually made a slight error. Uh, there was a mistake. Uh, I was supposed to actually model the crocodile in, in upward position so it was like bending upwards. But we can always fix that at a later stage. So we're just going to continue with our modeling phase. And then we're going to just pose it at a later stage with um, the model itself. So we're not going to rig it yet. And then we're just going to pose it in the right uh, position. And um, try to make it look very close to the reference images that we're going to be sculpting using the sculpt. So for this one, I didn't really focus much on the topology. I even added in separate geometry such as uh, extra cylinders and whatever to fill in uh, the fingers um, and then just continued on with the head. I even added in a separate geometry for the head as well. So I wasn't really focused much on the topology because I knew that we were just going to remesh this one at uh, a later stage. Also, I should note that you don't always have to remesh in Blender. You can use a separate software you can use zbrush or anything else um i believe maya is also good i'm not sure if maya has a remesh or i haven't used maya in years um, but of course this is a blender course uh, or a blender tutorial so what i did was remeshed in blender and then i also tried separate um softwares and tested different remeshes and saw which one was better you can also use blender add-ons um, like remeshing add-ons and whatnot. There are some really cool remeshing add-ons that just came out, some really cool tools, but some of them are really expensive. So you might just want to just use the one that comes with Blender. Obviously, it just quads everything, but you can always fix that at a later stage. And if you're not going to animate this, then that's totally fine. You can just use uh, Blender's remesher. So as you can see right now, we are just orientating some things differently. We're just um, making the crocodile face upwards, just bend upwards a little bit, and then changing the hand positions and the rotations, and also fixing some meshing errors here. There's some topology errors, I mean. And uh, there are two ways I know of doing this. You, we can either do it this way that you're seeing right now, where I'm just doing everything manually, or you, we can rig it and then we paint it and then um, actually change the orientation or change the pose using the rig and it will be really handy that way so we're going to rig it at a later stage i'll show you i won't show you how i rigged it but i'll just show you the final rig and uh it's a very simple rig there's nothing fancy about it it's just uh with the multi-resolution set off you just um, animate or you can pose your low poly and then you can turn your multi-resolution back up and you can have an already different pose crocodile with all the details that you just put in so one important thing that i do mostly when i finish modeling or as i'm modeling um, right before i remesh or even after i remesh is to check the normals orientation or the faces orientation so what you can do is you can go to your viewport overlays the option right at the top there just find your option the viewport overlays and then look for something that says face orientation and make sure that that's checked your model will highlight blue if the normals are orientated in the correct way and they will highlight red if uh, they are not so you just have to fix that so whenever you see anything that's red just make sure that you fix that sculpting the anatomy for this crocodile was actually easier than i thought it would be this was mainly because of the reference images being that good um, they were really high in detail. I was able to zoom in and see all the little details that I wanted to put into the sculpt as well. I also did some extra research on some dinosaurs and some alligators that alligators and crocodiles that stayed in the late Cretaceous period, such as the Dinosuchus. I did this because I wanted to see the major changes between uh, late Cretaceous uh, period animals to modern day alligators and crocodiles which really helped when it came to the sculpting of this crocodile. Sculpting the crocodile in this pose was really fun. Uh, it, it reminded me of when I was sculpting the bear. You will actually notice uh, as you're sculpting all these uh, animals or whatever, you will always notice like some similarities here and there. And 
uh, when I found this out when I was sculpting the pectoral set, uh, I remember that, oh, this kind of reminds me of the time when I was sculpting the bear. And if you're watching all our previous videos and everything like that, you'd uh, remember that I did mention that once you know how to uh, work on one animal anatomy, then if you're moving on to the next mammal, uh, you find you find a lot of similarities. You find it really easy. You get used to uh, sculpting all these kind of animals. So I found it really fun sculpting the crocodile when it was posed this way. Uh, another interesting thing, I actually did sculpt the crocodile before, and I actually sculpted it in the wrong pose. Funny enough, this is also the incorrect pose that we were supposed what we were supposed to sculpt it in a different pose. Funny enough, um, this is why I actually rigged it and then posed it correctly uh, at the end, and I will show you the rig at the end, like I mentioned before. So I actually posed it differently. It was actually just flat on its belly, and I actually found it a little tricky at some point because I was getting so confused with the way it was posed. It was just like a, a generic pose that you would find like a crocodile in so posing it in this way actually helped me uh visualize what the anatomy was supposed to look like i knew exactly where the pectorals and the biceps and the uh, deltoids were supposed to be even when it was like uh placed uh it was posed uh with its belly flat um, but for some reason my mind you just couldn't visualize it properly i just couldn't uh, sculpt it properly i did it but it, it looked really messy. So it was really good that I took some time and I redid it and I did it in this pose. Also, another thing, don't feel discouraged uh, or don't feel bad if your sculpt doesn't come out all right the first time around. Uh, it's totally okay as well to restart a sculpt or a project or whatever you're working on, just depending on how far you are in the project. If you're right at the beginning, then sure, you can restart and whatever, but also right at the end, if you're at a point in your sculpt where you just know very well that it's gonna be so difficult for you to edit things, it's gonna be difficult for you to change things. For you, say for example, you're, you accidentally applied your multi-resolution modifier, now you're actually just stuck with the higher resolution and you can't go down in resolution, it's gonna be really difficult for you to work on that because you need to be able to toggle between the subdivision uh, um, scales and resolution and whatnot. So it's totally okay for you to restart. Also, that's one way of you practicing. So some people might find it really uh, difficult to just drop something like uh, they, they've been working on this project for days and whatever and then they just see that it's not working out so they find it really hard to restart but sometimes it's really necessary for you to just don't delete your work don't throw it away keep it keep it somewhere keep it safe in in, in some storage or some file or whatever and uh look back at it later on in the in the future make another sculpt and then compare the two see how far you've gone see what changes you've made see exactly how far you've grown so it's totally okay for you to restart if your sculpt just isn't working out so as you can see here the sculpt is really easy to work on i was sticking to one brush even i wasn't changing between brushes that much especially here when i was working on the triceps also when you're working on the triceps um you can make it one just one giant uh blobby shape but you have to remember that the triceps has separate parts such as the le the triceps lateral head the medial head the triceps long head and uh the triceps tendon so what you can actually do for the triceps tendon is literally smooth out the area where the tendon is supposed to be and then for the rest you just uh come in with your either your standard brush or your clay strips and then uh, you can also just uh, carve in the details with your crease brush. But I recommend using, for this sculpt, I recommend using the draw sharp and then smoothing it out just a little bit. Um, but you can still use your crease brush. The, the problem is sometimes with um, uh, really small topology or really small meshes sometimes is your crease brush kind of like moves things to where the crease is normally focused. So your mesh will be like, heading towards that creased area so uh, i would much rather use the draw sharp so when it came to the head i really wanted this area to be really rough i wanted some noise details i wanted there to be scales as well i really wanted some really interesting details 
not too detailed, not too heavy. Something that would be interesting if you had to see it from afar or like close enough if you had to like just zoom out a little bit on the model and also if you zoomed in you would actually notice these details uh later on i actually used some brushes from the blender kit library blender kit is a really cool add-on for you to use in blender it's a quick download and also very easy to install once you have it in blender you have access to a large library of assets you have models you have materials you have hdris and you have brushes so now our model is finished here we have our finished crocodile our sculpt is done and if you are happy with the way the sculpt came out for you then good job and if you are not happy then you can always revisit the sculpt you can always work on it a little more you can rewatch this video as many times as you want uh, or you can watch other videos you can uh, gain more uh, you, you can gain more knowledge you can uh, go out and do some more research and continue with the sculpt at a later stage uh, but I'm really happy with the way this sculpt looks right now. I'm happy with the way it, uh, it ended up. And you will notice that the pose is different. So all I did, nothing major. I just rigged it and then we painted and just put it in this pose. So there's nothing fancy at all with the rig. And this is what the rig looks like. So when it comes to rigging, weight painting, and animating, or anything that has to do with like major movement, we're going to be doing all of that using the low res. So we're not going to be working with the high res anymore unless you want to edit the sculpt, you want to change some things in the details, then do that at the high res. So what you do once you start animating or when you start rigging, just make sure that you are at the low res or you could go into a multi-resolution modifier and you can either turn it off or you can go down in subdivision levels and then you can work on the low res. So all the details that you see here on the sculpt, all the details we've worked on, that's just for the final render. So what you can also do is UV unwrap your low resolution and then you can bake all that detail from the sculpt onto a normal map, like probably a 2K map or a 4K if you really want all that details because some details are just going to be lost uh, in, in, in the normal map. But uh, the higher you go in uh, resolution, obviously, the more details you'll have. So you can do that. And with all of that, we've come to the end of this video. This was a really fun project. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. If you didn't, if everything that we spoke of in this video you already knew, then I hope you enjoyed. Uh, check out our other videos on our channel. And if you have any questions or you have problems and you need help, then feel free to leave a comment below and we'll get back to you. And I will see you in the next one.